Okay, so our Saturday night gathering and uh, winter retreat. It's definitely winter. Um, another another day, day of snow this morning through the midday. And then it, uh, it's cleared off. But it's supposed to uh, start snowing again tonight. So we'll... Uh, uh, we'll see how much, see how much snow we get. I think this is more snow than I've seen here than uh, in the uh, almost thirty years. It certainly makes it nice and quiet here. There. Uh, <clears throat> so this evening uh, we chanted and uh, recited in English the uh, Dhamma Sutta, the the Buddha's first teaching on the setting forth the setting rolling the wheel of Dhamma. And it's considered the, well, probably the, the most important teaching that, that, uh, that the Buddha gave because it, it uh, of course, it did begin his dispensation, but it also um, kind of set the basis for what the what he was trying to do, what he was trying, what what the purpose of his teaching was for, and and that uh, that sense of the the um, the Buddhist teaching being for freeing the human heart from from, from suffering, from from uh, Creating uh, the difficulties and and uh, uh, complications that are so much a part of our human condition. Um, it's really important because the Buddha. I think one of the things that that uh, is so common in. You know whether it's a religion or a philosophy, uh, the the uh, trying to set out some kind of of uh, a doctrine and and uh, establish what's 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 right, uh, what's righteous, and and. Uh, and then argue about it for millennia, and, uh, so that uh, the Buddha was uh, saying, "Well, that is that is suffering. That is that, that's that's a problem already." Um, I mean, not only one is one taking one's own personal kind of difficulties and problems and creating creating conflict and, and confusion, and one's adding a, a whole sort of religious and philosophical dimension to it. Uh, and so, so the Buddha is trying to sidestep that. And, and, uh, and I think that's it's really, I mean, it's just brilliant. Uh, and we're incredibly fortunate to have uh, a teaching that points and there's this, this this middle way that the Buddha pointed to of of uh, avoiding the extremes of of either through you know desire and attachment um, uh, 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 
leading to to you know complication difficulty or or through a uh, uh, a desire for uh, getting rid of uh, annihilating uh, that aversion that one has to it shouldn't be this way um, the world shouldn't be this way I shouldn't be this way you shouldn't be this way and that uh, that is a uh, uh, it's a source of dukkha and the Buddha is, uh, you know, the middle way is is understanding. One is understanding how it comes to be and understanding, well, what's actually really important. And, and that, uh, uh, and, and what are the, what are the basis of, 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 of insight? And it's like in this discourse, uh, the Buddha, uh, it, it, it comes comes across that the uh, you know the basis of that that insight uh, that was liberate a liberating insight that that uh, anyakandanya first experience was the you know all that is of the nature arises of the nature to cease and you think well what's so important about that. But it's that recognition of uh, uh, of a fundamental, a universal truth uh, that one things are um, are impermanent, are changing, are uncertain, uh, and in order for things to arise for them to be of the nature to arise and to cease, they depend on causes and conditions. Uh, and if we understand the causes and conditions, we can have a better handle on, on, the, uh, on how we uh, react or respond or get entangled in uh, those conditions. Uh, and again, a sense of sidestepping. Uh, the, the 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 reactions through understanding, and uh, understanding the, the the nature of that which is Im- impermanent, uh, that is changing, that is is unstable. Um, uh, one, it's fraught with suffering. Two, it is is uh, um, it's it is really can't be taken as this is what I am. This is me. This is mine. Establish a sense of self or essence within that, and uh, and so that one one returns to what the refuge is is then uh, say. Knowledge, understanding, awareness, just this fundamental quality of knowing. And, and that, is, uh, uh, that is a, uh, a fundamental aspect of um, being human, is that we are, we're conscious beings. And that have the capacity to, to know, and of course we get entangled in all sorts of deluded knowledge. But, but the the ability to know when we recognize it and return to that, that has the ability to 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 free the heart, and and not get not get entangled. So this, 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 this returning to the knowing, returning to this, this quality of, of, of uh, uh, awareness uh, and, and a mindfulness, um, it's so simple that we overlook it. Um, 
thinking of a. Uh, um, there's a, uh, a disciple of Ajahn Man who was very highly regarded in his his knowledge and and uh, understanding and and uh, but he uh, he was uh, he didn't ordain until he was older he was in his he first came to the monastery to live with Ajahn Man and when he was about 50 he was, he was lumpu Lumpu Boa. He was uh, Lumpu was like a venerable grandfather. Uh, he was already old when he came uh, to the monastery, and then he was illiterate, and it took him uh, three years to learn the chanting to to uh, um, uh, to to do the to do the ordination because. He couldn't read. It had to be uh, re recited to him. He'd repeat it, and he couldn't because you know, he. Couldn't but he wasn't because he was illiterate. You know, oftentimes we think of in you know intelligence as as uh, as uh, uh, associated with what you know our our book knowledge and our uh, conceptual knowledge, um, but. Sometimes that gets in the way of, uh, 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 I'd say, a wisdom of discernment because of the, the, uh, you know, for the, uh, for the Buddha, the knowledge that is important is the knowledge within our own hearts, uh, and to, to be to be able to discern. What is it that leads to suffering? What is it that leads out of suffering to freedom from suffering? And that requires uh, much more of a uh, a clear, a clear awareness, a, 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 a lucid uh, discernment uh, that is is based on this, just this fundamental knowing. So that this Lumpo Boa became a, became highly regarded, highly, a great master as a as a monk, because he listened to the listened to the teachings and practiced as diligent. He was very humble, and he ended up being a, a widely regarded as having completed his uh, his his uh, completed his work, you know, liberated. So that paying attention to well, what's actually um, uh, what is essential for for our um, say our liberation, our freedom, our peace, uh, our happiness and well-being. And there's a, there's a discourse where the Buddha talks about six different things that partake of true knowledge. And it's in there, they're all, and they said they're perceptions, the perception of, the perception of impermanence. Um, is this is the first one, is this the perception of him. So that, because it, it's, it's not sort of the, uh, it partakes of true knowledge, liberating knowledge. Um, because one is perceiving uh, with through the light of uh, say of impermanence of uncertainty change and one uh, uh, one is seeing things in their in their true nature in their true with true knowledge uh, and it's not just a uh, uh, an intellectual concept of of, of impermanence or uh, um, inconstancy, things being inconstant. Um, but it is a being able to recognize and perceive 
uh, that that truth of of impermanence, whether it's on the physical level of our um, of our bodies, or the physical level of the world around us, or uh, mental, emotional, intellectual, conceptual, uh, every single aspect of 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 experience uh, is uh, is is impermanent, uh, and and it doesn't mean that it's meaningless. What it means is we recognize its true nature and and not entangle ourselves in ways that that create suffering, create dukkha. Uh, the second aspect of percep of uh, that per- thing that partakes of true knowledge is the perception of uh, perception of dukkha. Uh, seeing the, the the unsatisfactory nature of things, rather than you know getting uh, swept up in the the mood of something uh, that is, whether it's to our liking or to our disliking, um, it, it's, it's 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 unsatisfactory. It's never it doesn't have the capacity to truly satisfy. Um, there's a fundamental limitation that everything has, and again, whether that 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 is physical or mental, emotional, conceptual, um, Everything is, is is limited and uh, uh, unable to completely completely satisfy. Um, either it doesn't live up to expectations, or it does, uh, and we have to be separated from it. It's just this the its fundamental nature. So this is not not trying to squeeze something out of experience that isn't isn't there. It's not possible to do. Uh, there's a, uh, uh, an ability to, to understand things in their true nature and, and, and be, not be, you know, not be surprised uh, when things, when things change, when things aren't uh, uh, according to what we, we're, we're hoping what we were wishing, what we were uh, expecting. It's like the other, uh, the, the third aspect of uh, our the thing that partakes of true knowledge is the the uh, perception of not self, uh, perception of anatta, and again the sense of uh, this is a, these are perceptions. Um, you're not necessarily th- having to c- think about it, conceive it. It's it's uh, perception is a much more fundamental part of our uh, process of of experience, and that. Uh, and it's it, it's more primer, primal, primary, um, as how as we perceive, and to be able to see with the lens of of, yeah, of not self. Oh, this is uh, not me, not mine, not what I am. Uh, and it's like one. One of the uh, say big insights of uh, of of the Buddhas, or one of the big uh, a takeaway that one can say is uh, sometimes when people ask, "Oh, what's the uh, you know, what's an important teaching of the Buddhas? What's a, what's the essence of the Buddha's teaching and uh, and and the practice?" And you say, "Well, just learning that." And knowing that that your thoughts are not yourself, you think, 
Oh. Oh, really? Yeah. But I always thought I was my thoughts. <laughs> and see, you realize, oh, no, no, not at all. Uh, thoughts just sort of natter away like crazy. <laughs> and the, uh, uh, you know, we assume a sense of, uh, of self. We assume a sense of I and me and mine uh, within uh, within that. But the, uh, uh, there is a, a possibility to not be not be limited and and bound by thoughts, emotion, and it's it's only through. Again, through true knowledge, this partakes of true knowledge. Uh, and it doesn't mean one doesn't have thoughts. It doesn't mean one can't use thought. It's actually when you've got a, 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 a perspective of true knowledge that you can, you can, you've actually got some freedom to, to apply things with, with wisdom. Uh, or to not apply them. Just, be, just because you think it doesn't mean it, uh, it has to be true. Uh, so I'd say it's a, an opportunity to step uh, out of the, the, the limitation of our, uh, of our this body-mind process uh, and you know, to really use it uh, with for for benefit, that's one of the things when the Buddha talks of the, you know, the, the idiom that's used for the purpose of practice is like for the for the happiness and welfare of oneself and for others. Uh, you know, one is is able to really uh, actualize that because one isn't limited by uh, the, 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 those assumptions and perceptions of, of me and mine, uh, that me, mine agenda can get really tiresome. The fourth thing that, that partakes of true knowledge is the perception of abandoning. And, and that uh, to be able to recognize that you can Oh, I can abandon, I can put this down, I can let it go. Um, and, uh, and, and, and again, the freedom that comes from that. Because the, uh, you know, I don't know how anybody's, anybody else's mind works, but you know, the, I don't know how, you know, how those things. The, uh, I came across a, a phrase, a, a saying, recently. You know, everything that I ever let go, everything that I ever let go of, had claw marks on it. And that, that sense of that unwillingness to 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 really let go, to abandon um, a mood, or a, an impression, or a view, or an opinion. Um, but, and we all know how difficult that is. But in terms of aligning oneself with true knowledge, it's that perception of abandoning that uh, it reminds us, encourages us to, you know, to, to, to tr truly let go. And that our yeah you know, our sense of peace and freedom from suffering is is comes with uh, when we're willing to to abandon and that's uh, and uh, that and the word abandon is is the uh, is one in the uh, from the uh, uh, Dhamma Chaka Sutta that we recited this evening. Um, the the Buddha points to gives the true the different truths, uh, the four noble truths, and and one and the the uh, say the 
duty or responsibility that one has to each truth so that the cause of suffering and the Buddha, of course the Buddha points of what, what is the cause of suffering um, and the cause is tanha or desire that is based in greed, hatred and delusion in different ways sensual desire, desire for for being, desire for annihilation of being, non-being. Uh, and, but then the, say, the duty or responsibility, uh, the task that one has to perform in relationship to that, that truth, that second move, is it, uh, that is to be abandoned. The, the, this, the, the, and that is a noble truth. So that, that perception of abandoning, seeing the, the, the necessity of, 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 of abandoning, of letting go, uh, of relinquishing uh, the, 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 those elements of of, of desire and attachment, clinging, and recognizing that's where our true, true peace really lies. And that partakes of true knowledge. And the next thing that the Buddha points to as partaking of, of true knowledge is the perception of dispassion. Um, and in the um, that, it, and sometimes in English it's hard to. You know, some of the English words are not great um, translations of the of the uh, of the Pali words. The word viraka. Uh, is yeah, it's, it's literally a it's dispassion, but it also has a connotation of like fading away of coolness and 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 ease and like in especially in modern English then like if you're dispassionate then you're just sort of cold and heartless, which is is not at all what they. Uh, what the Buddha is pointing to. It's a, 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 an ease and coolness of heart that is clear and still and steady. Uh, and that's really desirable. Uh, and to be able to get a function from a place of true knowledge and, and, and not get not get swept up, not get entangled, not get, not complicating uh, one's existence with reactivity. Because uh, there's constant re reacting to things out of our likes and our dislikes and approval, disapproval, or wanting, not wanting, should be this way, shouldn't be that way. It just is so tiring. Uh, and so that they, this quality of dispassion, perception of dispassion, uh, is, is like a breath of fresh air, uh, of ease and clarity. The last thing that the, the, uh, the Buddha points to is partaking of true knowledge um, is the perception of cessation. Um, and that sense of um, drawing close to stilling, settling. Our, our you know, what tends to be really compelling to the mind is, is beginning, starting, 
uh, initiating, uh, getting ahead, getting mugwa, and 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 there's not much attention paid to to the settling of things, the spacious the spaciousness that comes in the heart when we allow things to settle. Uh, the spaciousness that comes in the heart when we allow, when we allow things to cease, when we allow a, a, a thought to cease, or a mood to cease, or a, and recognizing that cessation opens up the the possibility for for stillness and and and. Uh, and a like going to the going to the silence of the heart. It's just so satisfying. And of course, one had to, in order to be drawn to that. One has to have a sense of of uh, really investigated the the. The, the fraught nature of our uh, constant trying to be something, trying to get, trying to for, um, make things fall into uh, the, the, the way that we would like it to be. And recognize, oh, peace is uh, much more accessible when we're willing to let things cease. And to recognize that Actually, uh, this cessation, it's always there. Uh, it's just we, we don't, we're not content with it. We're not, uh, we're not content with it. We don't like it. We want things to be something else. And, uh, and of course, we keep, we keep moving. We keep doing. We keep being. We keep becoming. We keep reacting. Uh, and that keeps us off balance and and unsettled, uh, and that's how we live our lives. And so that turning a, that perception of cessation, and 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 exploring the 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 it's like just even as we in sitting in meditation, exploring the. The cessation of of the breath, and just sometimes just letting the breath settle, because the mind always wants to move to the okay the move, and it doesn't mean you're sitting there trying to hold your breath. I mean that's not the not the point, uh, but the uh, yeah, recognize breathing in with the gaps that are quite natural to experience we tend not to pay much attention to. And so that we're constantly reacting and moving. Or a cessation of a, of a thought. Um, we don't really pay much attention to when a thought ends or a feeling ends. We've emotion sort of ends. But they all, everything has an ending. Everything has a point of cessation, um, but it tends not to be attended to. And when something's not attended to, it isn't known and understood, so it doesn't have value for us. But then that, that perception, as the Buddha is saying, what partakes of true knowledge is a perception of, of cessation. We start to expand the experience of, of the stilling uh, that is possible. Uh, the stillness and silence of, 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 of the heart um, where it can be really peaceful. Um, and enjoying that peace, enjoying that stillness. Yes, it's it's truly settling. So these are are uh, things that the Buddha says partake of true knowledge. I think it's 
worth you know, reflecting, investigating on, seeing because that it is this dimension of true knowledge that uh, is what is liberating in the Buddhist path. It's not about being uh, being right or being righteous or being better or you know whatever. None of that applies because all of that is fraught with with suffering. But you know, that sense of true knowledge is what is peaceful. It's like well, one of the one of my favorite um, phrases or idioms that come up in the, uh, over and over again in the, in the discourses and the Buddha. So it's like an exclamation. This is peaceful. This is sublime. And just that pointing to uh, yeah, dispassion, cessation, and nibbana. So I'll offer that for reflection this evening.